notice that we only have 30 minutes. This is a flash session. We originally submitted um, a full workshop, so we had to modify it. So the way we would like to, uh, to run this session is a couple of facts uh, related to uh, women and the internet. And then we will open it up for discussion. I'm joined here by um, three speakers who have experience across the spectrum of uh, women and ICT. Please join me in welcoming Tina Chagan, Country Director of Read Bhutan, Linda Rastri from Plan International USA, as well as Angela Ramos, Executive Director of Malawi Development Foundation in the Philippines. Um, we, all four of us, are here on behalf of uh, Beyond Access. Uh, with members around the world, Beyond Access is a um, movement of people and organizations committed to the idea that modern public libraries power economic and social development. As we all know, internet is big and it continues to grow each day. However, access to technology and access to the internet is still unequal. Many projects have developed different um, many international organizations have developed different projects centered around bringing more women and girls online. And libraries, um, on their own way, have also been working towards uh, bridging the gender divide on the internet. And that is why we're here today, um, because we're really interested in this issue. So my first question is um, to you, Tenley. Uh, 23 percent fewer women than men are online in the developing country. And I was wondering, why is this happening? And what can we do in order to connect more women and girls to the internet? Thank you, and good morning to everyone again. Um, the fact is 22 percent of, of fewer, fewer women are online than men. Uh, before we even uh, address that, we have to look at the underlying issues of why fewer women have access to internet. I think um, this my the experiences I'm going to share is more so in the developing world because that's where I do my work and that's where my experiences come from. Uh, before we can even address a public policy framework towards uh, creating a more conducive policy for women. We have to put a public Number one is our stereotypes and the traditional roles of women and girls typically play in most of the society. And the second one is the role for women in the developing world. Um, away from my first point, uh, the everyone knows I mean, it's a fact that there are traditionally women and female and girls have to do household, household work, women who are seen more at the home. And families, and I would go as far as saying education systems do not necessarily give or encourage women and IT or women in technology. So I think uh, when policymakers and business organizations gather together, like the former social media, we need to keep in mind that we need to address those issues of how we can change or shift the traditional view of and stereotypes of what roles the girl and the women can play in terms of um, internet and more specifically the whole technology movement. The second point is you see most in the developing world an average of about 50% of the population and it's even more so less for the women. The women are not literate, then we already say two environment for men and women. And I, and I have to stress men and women because, they're, because the very fact that men and women um, have, it's, it's, you know, it's a safe place that for men and women means that there is no barrier. For example, our work in Nepal, uh, women don't need to seek the permission of men 
to go and use the library. And I, it, it may seem very mundane, but that's a very powerful notion in, in very conservative societies in the past. Uh, women have easy access to internet in libraries, either be to do a go to a cyber cafe to get access to internet. Uh, internet internet facilities are normally free. And when they come to a library, they not only are faced with the challenge of using it, but they're actually guided with by librarians who, who can help them um, get used to internet and use internet for their own gain and livelihood. So I'm going to stop here. So those are the three main points I'd like to point out uh, in terms of um, uh, when we think about women and internet, um, the, two, the two underlying issues and the fact that library can be a very powerful platform to encourage and to facilitate this change or to bring about this movement for women, women's engagement and internet and Thank you. Jimmy, thank you very much. Um, and I guess some access I would like to move towards um, women in actual uh, tech industry and tech fields. Um, Angela, you calculate that in 10 years there will be 700,000 more ICT jobs than professionals to fill them. However, almost 40% of women who don't use the internet blame lack of familiarity and comfort with technology. And even in high-income countries, women only make up 20% of ICT specialists. Why is there a lack of women in the tech field, and how can we create enabling ICT environment for women and girls? Thank you, Nancy, and um, to everyone. Uh, maybe I'd like to answer this question uh, from you know uh, where I come from, which is in the Philippines. Uh, in general, for example, in the Philippines, uh, there's actually a high rate of women uh, having access to the internet. But again, uh, there's the same problem there that not really a lot of women uh, go into the ICT field. And it goes the same for sciences and, uh, and the engineering field. And I guess one of the problems there maybe is that, uh, well, is that uh, these, uh, most girls aren't exposed at a younger age and exposed to uh, options and opportunities uh, that, that they can have uh, you know, getting a career in the ICT. So based on the work that we've been doing, we've realized that it's important to you know, uh, encourage uh, girls uh, you know, uh, while they're still young, perhaps you know, at, the, uh, at the primary and at the secondary school level. So basically to create an enabling environment for young girls to explore options and to have this interest in, in going to ICT and related fields of science and uh, engineering. So uh, in terms of enabling environment, you know, there, of course, the government needs to come there with policies to encourage that. And we also like to maybe involve schools. You know, schools need to involve teachers or need to be involved in really encouraging girls to go into this field, of offering their opportunities, strengthening subjects in science and, and technology, uh, strengthening courses in computers. And, uh, you know, for example, at the secondary level, uh, you know, we can encourage Girls, for example, to learn how to code, you know, and to learn how to develop applications at a younger age, and also encourage them to maybe do community projects, the music and community where they can apply what they've learned, and that it can be as easy as uh, girls going to their communities and teaching other girls, for example, how to learn uh, how to learn using computers, and uh, of course, uh, schools themselves, for example, universities can you know can have scholarships. Uh, for 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 the girls and young women to go into the ICT field, and uh, and also in the, the industries themselves, they, there needs to be more hiring. Once we have this um, base where they can get recruit uh, capable women, uh, there needs to be more funds to hire more women to go into the ICT field. So basically, it really uh, boils down to my experience in really creating. An enabling environment at all levels, and also uh, includes giving them, giving young girls uh, a safe space, for example, for them to learn uh, how to code, uh, and then you know uh, be with other girls, and also having mentors and those women who are already in the field to encourage them, to inspire them. So you can have venues like this in, uh, in schools, in places like libraries. 
And uh, so uh, this would, you know, if we have all these mechanisms that will enable girls at a younger age to really, you know, inspire them and take their interest in going to ICT, uh, eventually, you know, when they grow up, they'll, 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 they'll be this uh, for, uh, working force of women who will be ready to, who will be ready to enter into the ICT industry and thus will have, uh, you know, will bridge that gap, gender gap in terms of, of, of women working in the ICT industry. Thank you very much, Lizzo. And Mr. Jason, I guess, Linda, um, if you kind of could help us summarize, we have talked, Henry talks about the reasons why there are fewer women online, and Angela talks about it, um, what we could do to bring more girls into the tech field. What should be some of the guiding principles to keep in mind when we are designing policies around internet and gender? I think a few things would be important. One is What the local context is and, and what girls and women want to do online, that's how we can be on traditional ways of traditional training for traditional things to do. Here's the next thing I'm going to say, and it's a pretty good way that they like to teach women to go online to different kinds of cooking activities. They're very stereotypical types of activities, and I think helping girls and women kind of read further that dramatic and think about what we can actually do um, if they do that. There's so quality, and quality is important, it's not just numbers, it's just quality access and quality information, which then kind of brings you to the idea of working content and making sure that there's content that's being produced by women and girls, as well as that quality is being used in think it's also important that that women go into the industry and that she's a developing person, and that she's a developing person, and that she's a developing person,
thank you very much. I think those are really important thoughts, and it goes back to having women mentors um, for the world so that they they are comfortable um, exploring uh, careers in the IT field. I'm Elina, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm a student of other things. And I'm a um, I just had a question. I was wondering, I mean, I'm really for the environment of them, of course. I was wondering how useful it is to talk about women and internet, and maybe it might, I was just thinking, it might be more useful to talk about women and education, and then internet is also part of that, and women and ex careers and divide it into those subjects instead of just working talking about women and the internet which is a little bit broad and I just see how you feel about kind of the um, yeah I mean it's your point it is what I mean I think that's what we are trying to say in the channel is that so we need to have this Uh, well, uh, I'll show you two examples that we've done in the first in the first we have this program that basically is going to be the first And uh, we have a specific program for a uh, specific, specific program for training and different for women. 
the different considerations, the different, for example, the differences of how women and men have the internet. I mean, for example, um, we both provide them access to the internet using whatever space like telecenter or the library. But when once they go there, once they learn how to use the internet, women and men would use, uh, have different uses for the technology so that they could put it there. Another program is the Russian Age Girls that is also done with uh, IRS. Basically, uh, uh, that environment, that enabling environment that trains young high school girls on uh, developing their IT skills, at the same time developing their uh, community leadership skills, as well as skills in uh, coming up with um, local community programs and local community projects to engage. Whatever they learn from that uh, program, they bring to their community and they share it with other uh, girls and other individuals. Um, so I come from uh, an NGO background and I work with and work with uh, establishing community life in South Central for the platform development. So my my uh, an example of what you said and I already alluded to it earlier is in some of the communities that we work in the call in the and we work in rural communities, our libraries are the only or sometimes our libraries are in the case where they can do it. So we are the first uh, access point for most of the young girls and women. Um, we bring them in, we give them uh, computer training, we learn from the very basic of what to see, what to see, what to mount, what to see, what to see, what to see, what to see. So we, we're talking of very basic to, uh, you know, to the intermediate uh, so our program is just our library has changed, and from my experience, it's, uh, they are again. I, I tend to keep using this word safe space, but they really are a safe, safe space, uh, especially for girls and women to come in and get their first experience, the first hand knowledge on how to do tech, how to get engaged in the whole internet movement. Uh, because 30% of the people living in developing countries are connected to the internet. That's just 31% of the whole world, so, I mean, of the developing world. That means 10% of the people don't have access to it. And when you go more rural, it's even, it's even more people than that. Any other questions? Safe place, I really feel online, or online. Yes, we 
Thank you very much. And um, we have about two minutes, and I wanted to take um, this two minutes maybe to ask our speakers um, to give one concrete recommendation to government that are interested in empowering and bringing more women and girls online. I think a uh, recommendation to policymakers would be uh, don't look at internet as education. Look at internet as part of the bigger picture. Especially in the developing world, again, I go back to the developing world that's where I come from. Uh, you have to look at education, you have to look at infrastructure, you have to look at the uh, access spaces for women and girls and also look at the education system, not the education, but the education system. How we encourage women and girls to be, uh, to, are we encouraging them to have the option of being more capable of creating a career in the country. So I think those would be my recommendations for policy. Uh, well, all things being equal, uh, for example, for example there's already policies and there's all the providing them uh, education, literacy, and the policies and the maybe the next step for government to really fine tuning their policies which really can now look at the equity issue, for example, uh, there's access provided uh, for both men and women. Uh, how should policy also look at uh, the differences in how women and men use the technology uh, for whatever purpose they want? Uh, so that's one at uh, the policy level. And maybe another recommendation that's specific, for example, if you'd like to encourage more women to go to the IT, engineering, design, again, start them young. I give that in school, maybe with some families, with parents, and parents and girls to go to the field. Uh, maybe one uh, one recommendation I would give for schools, maybe uh, the primary or secondary school level, start teaching girls how to code. One last plug, I forgot to that. Use libraries as a platform to get this conversation going, to get this program going, because there are 230,000 like we said earlier, 230,000 libraries around the world. These are resources that are there that you can easily use without having to spend more resources. Um, I would like to thank our panelists and thank you very much for your participation. This is really an interesting discussion. And if for those of you who are interested in learning more about how currently community centers and libraries are working towards bridging the digital um, divide, there are a lot of handouts here. Um, feel free to come and grab them. Thank you very much.